I really want to, to get the feeling that I know the, the person, the climber, the character behind the face better. What they climb, the hard routes, that, that's what people already know. Climbing is their life and they do everything for climbing. I think competition climbing, for me, it's, it's really interesting. A lead competition or boulder competition with a perfect route setting, we have a really interesting and a really good competition. To become Olympic, we have to change this, this, this and these things. That could be dangerous as well. Olympic, yes, but we shall not sell our spot. Hi there, today we have an interview with Heiko Wilhelm. He's the coach of the Austrian team, the CEO of the Austrian Federation. He was the official photographer of the IFSC for many years. Back in the day, he competed internationally for Austria. And last year, he published this book, Beyond the Face, Characters of Climbing. For a climbing nerd like me, this book is gold. It has, I don't know, tens and tens of interviews with some of the most famous and best climbers ever like, I don't know, Lynn Hill, Jerry Moffat, but also stars of today, Sean McAuley, Jan Kim, Jan Hoyer, and also a ton of really cool pictures taken in competitions and portraits of many, many famous climbers. In this interview, he talks about the book, the process of creating the book, and what he has learned in all these competitions about all these climbers, about the evolution of the sport, about the future of the sport, and even a little bit about climbing photography. Big thanks to Heiko for this interview, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Beyond the Face um, was an idea. I, uh, it came to me two, two or three years ago. I can't remember exactly, but um, the, the main idea behind was to, to bring all the moments, all the impressions, all the, the feelings I got over the last years uh, down to, to a book or to a paper, because I always had the feeling uh, Climbers, the protagonists, even friends, they come and the time will come when they leave the stage. And at the end, on how many things we can remember. And that's such a pity, like, like Chabot or Sandrine Levé or all the, the strong climbers. Um, they, maybe most of the climbers doesn't know any, most of people who are interested in climbing doesn't know it anymore. And so I thought, okay, maybe this could be just a small part I could do. And that was the reason why I started with this project. I really want to, to get the feeling that I know the, the person, the climber, the character behind the face better, a bit, at least a bit better. And I told to every single athlete who took part at this, um, it would be good if we, if we uh, can go a bit deeper with the questions and with the answers and not to be too shallow because um, how they train, what, what they think about diets and what they climb, the hard routes, that, that's what people already know. But um, my idea was to get a, a bit of a personal level of them. And sometimes I had the feeling that it worked really well. Sometimes it was not so easy because it's, it depends on the, on the language, on the culture. Uh, but also on the relationship I had to them. So, but all in all, I think it's, it's good. We, we, uh, we figured out a couple of new perspectives to athletes and new information and new, yeah, some things we didn't know before and that's cool. That was actually the, the hardest um, decision for me because honestly, everybody deserves being uh, in a book or somewhere else, but that is just impossible because over the last 30 years, we have a few hundred awesome uh, characters. I, I decided to take those at athletes who, of course, um, some I have a, a, a certain relation, but also I, I have the feeling that uh, they climb um, influenced competition climbing maybe a bit more than others. That's one of a lot of reasons. I try to, to talk to all of them in a, on a personal level, so not just writing a uh, an email or a letter. So that most of the time worked because I was on all the competitions in the last years. So I asked them, is it possible now? But it was not easy because they were also in kind of a competition mood. So I had to find the right moment. Yeah, of course, there were some uh, language barriers, but it was sometimes uh, even, even cooler because um, they, um, some of those athletes who does not speak that good uh, English, 
um, they talked a lot in metaphors. And I mean, it was not easy to, to bring it then down um, to the, to, to the, in, into the book, into words, but it was, um, they, they told more in, in pictures and that was really cool. So more, they gave their uh, stories more, sometimes more life. All in all, I was really surprised about how, how open all the climbers to me was during, during this project. They're all addicted to climbing. Climbing is, I think, uh, for all of them, the most important in their life. And that's authentic and that's honest and that's really cool. It's not just about competition climbing, it's really about climbing. Climbing is their life and they do everything for climbing. That's the, the thing I definitely got all the time. Sometimes probably it's the, um, the, the mood to, to, to train maybe just a bit more than the others. So to, to climb a bit or to train a bit over the edge. Uh, the mental aspect is really important just to, to, to be focused because there are so many, so, so many strong climbers, but sometimes they just didn't succeed because it's the, the mental part is just hard. I think uh, being, being one of, of the best climber in the world uh, needs uh, so many different things. It probably needs to start with a bit of luck where you can start climbing, how you get into climbing, who are your mentors, who are your protagonists, who um, learn your climbing maybe even as a, in, in, during your childhood, but also um, which, how much support you get from, from different people. And you, you have to, I think you have to, to get very early um, the, the, this unique thing in climbing. You, every climber know what I mean. That, that you think, okay, that's my sport and I really want to do it. So the, the photographs, especially the, the portraits that I did together with Elias Holzknecht, he's a good friend of me and a good photographer. So we, we took the chance on several competitions where we asked the athletes, uh, do you think it's possible to take a portrait of you? And that was not easy because usually when you do a, a portrait shooting, you have maybe half an hour, an hour or even more, but we had just half a minute or even a minute and that was really a challenge. So, but at the end, I, I think maybe 90% of the portraits uh, went really well and they really show also maybe a bit of their character as well, even on the, on the picture. So that worked at the end pretty good. The, the idea behind was to, um, to show the, the reader of the book or the people who are interested in, in competition climbing uh, certain parts of uh, certain moments of competition climbing so there's not just the climbing there are emotional moments moments of success moments of frustration or even as you said small parts which show the power the strangers and all these things and we also saw it, it should be because taking pictures is kind of art and that should be also part of it i think a, a good climbing picture would be if uh, could be if it's different than the others, different than the picture you took before, different than peop other people did. So we always try to, to find uh, different perspectives, different ideas, be creative, and just to, yeah, and of course emotions. Emotions are always good to, to show. Uh, I think competition climbing, for me, it's, it's really interesting. So it's, um, Every single moment, um, I, I, I'm part of it. I really enjoy it, and it's, it's really, it's most of the time, it's stunning and it's exhausting. Um, I think a very important part is to bring all the international events on the, on the same high level. So, because I would say the athletes, they train all over the year, go uh, traveling all over the world. They deserve perfect events, and unfortunately, that's not that not, did not happen yet. Of, co of course, uh, we see some, some events like uh, it in, in Innsbruck or in France, especially in Paris-Bercy, the World Championships, or Munich. Um, they try to, to, to build a show around the, the competition, around the sport, um, without changing the sport itself. So it's 
it's so much more stunning and so much more uh, interesting and, uh, and an incredible atmosphere what they try to build for all the spectators. And some events, they just um, put uh, on the stage the setup and that's it. I mean, the, the, sp the sport part is, is good, could be really good as well. The, the root setting could be really good as well, but the, sh the show is missing. And in, with, with show, I don't, mean, I don't mean that the, the sport should be a victim of the show, that should not happen. The, the fear I sometimes have is if, if people think, okay, we have to change climbing to make it more attractive. I don't think so. I think um, the, the competition, how is it now with these rules? Maybe with a few small adjustments or adaptions, uh, it's, it's just perfect. It's r route setting is a really important part. If we, I mean, I mean, I think everybody would agree if we have, if we will see a lead competition or boulder competition with a perfect route setting, we have a really interesting and a really good competition. And the only thing which would be not that good if people try to, to change it just because they think it would be better. So to, to go away from, from the basic of climbing, from their pure philosophy we know from climbing outside as well, that should be always kept. I think uh, becoming Olympic will be a really hard step, but honestly, I think the IFSC is working really professional and really hard into this direction. So it's, I think it's a tough, tough, tough thing they do. Um, but at, at the end, as, as we have seen at, on the last time when we, ha we have been at the shortlist and, some, and then at the end we got rejected, it's, it probably will always be a political game. So it's, it will be hard anyway, even if we are the most attractive and the best and the young and the most dynamic sport, it will be hard, but we have a chance. And I just can say how it would be in Austria for the National Federation, but I, I'm sure it will be for a lot of other federations the same. Um, becoming Olympic, don't tell me why, because the sport would be still, still the same. It should not change anything. Uh, you get more uh, support by the government. You, the athletes might have more money. So it's, it's also like a, a domino effect. And then you can work more professional. But it also uh, could bring out some, some, some bad things like um, at the moment the, the atmosphere during a competition, it's so, it's so fr a friendship atmosphere, that's one of the best things we have in our sport. And that's a thing we have to keep. And probably money could change this, but I don't think so. Because climbers will be still the same. I, I think at the end it's up to the responsible person that they handle our sport with care because just if someone else says, for example, okay, to become Olympic, we have to change this, 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 and these things, that could be dangerous as well. Olympic, yes, but we shall not sell our sport. Um, at the moment, we are in a, in a lucky, or in the last 10 years, we were in a, in a really lucky position that uh, climbing is very popular in Austria, uh, especially it's, uh, recognized by the government as a sport which identifies really well to Austria because of the Austrian Alps. They always say climbing is part of our country. And that's, uh, that's a big advantage we have in our country. But anyway, it's important or an important part in the past was and it's, it will still be an important part for the future. We are, uh, in Austria, at least, at the end, we are a small group of persons, but we all try to work hard in the same direction. As, but also, the, all these single athletes and characters we, we had in the past and we, we still have, like Kilian, Anna, Jakob, Angie, Katarina, we have so many climbers, so many good characters that even the, those work with us together in that direction. They are not here and consume, they help us to, to support or to, prog to support the sport and to progress it. No, we, ha we don't have a system that produces good climbers. Um, I think um, especially those successful or glory years in the last 
10, year, 10 years um, that mainly come from that were, there was a really good atmosphere between those athletes, they, they good friendships and we know train together with my best friend is always easier than training together with a, a person I don't like. And that's one important part and winning or losing is also easier when people next to are your friends. That's it, hope you like that and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.